Welcome to Tux Reviews Distro Reviews. Today I'm looking at the new released update from the Linux Deepin crew, namely Deepin 2014.1. For those not familiar with the Deepin distribution, Deepin, formerly known as Linux Deepin, is an Ubuntu-based distribution that originated from China that currently holds 24th place on the DistroWatch rankings. It aims to provide an elegant, user-friendly and reliable operating system. They have created their own desktop environment called DDE, or Deepin Desktop Environment, which is based on HDM5 technologies. The Deepin community have created quite a few homegrown applications, like Deepin Software Center, Deepin Music Player, Deepin Movie Player, Deepin Terminal, Deepin Store, and Deepin Game that are all tailored to the average user, being easy to install and use. Deepin is aimed at the average desktop user as an OS alternative to Windows. The Deepin desktop environment is simplistic but functional, but does resemble OS X, as it features a window managing dock at the bottom but lacks the bar at top. This saves valuable desktop space, and even though this would seem to cause problems, the team have found some innovative ways to circumvent these. The clock has been moved to an icon on the dock, and by hovering the mouse over, you can access the calendar. Clicking on the clock takes you directly to the clock settings in the control center. Application quick access icons have also been moved to a status icon on the dock, where the icons are hidden by default but revealed when an application has a notification pending. The applications can also be revealed by simply moving the mouse over the icon so the user can interact with the icons. Volume notification and access has also been moved to the dock, where the icon displays the current volume and by hovering the mouse over notification displays, that allow the user to change the system and application volumes. Clicking on the icon displays the sound tab in the control center. The same icons can be found for the network interfaces and the mounted storage devices. Another feature of the Deepin desktop environment is the hot corners that have been coded in. By default, the top left displays the launcher. Bottom left hides all windows and displays the desktop. Bottom right displays the control center and the top right is unassigned but can be assigned by the user. But the options to assign are limited at the moment, but I understand that more options should be added later on in newer versions of the OS. The launcher is visually attractive, as it blurs the desktop to increase text legibility. Finding installed software is easy, as software have been sorted into categories, but most users will probably find that the search function is faster and can be accessed by simply typing the name of the software. For users of icons on desktop, the desktop supports icons, and icons can be dragged on top of each other to form icon groups. To me, the most remarkable feature in the Deepin repertoire is the Deepin control center, which is unique to the Deepin distro. Upon entering, you're greeted by the home screen that displays all the different tabs of the settings available. The tabs pretty much contain all the settings you would expect from a distro. The customizations options are numerous and include themes and icon packs pre-installed with the distro. The only function I could not find was an option to install third-party video drivers from the manufacturer, but on investigation I found that this is on purpose, as the developer urges the users to use the pre-installed drivers, as a lot of the users have been experiencing problems with the third-party drivers, especially on NVIDIA cards. This is quite a concern for a lot of users. Looking at the rest of the homegrown software from the Deepin team, there are quite a few left. Deepin Movie is a minimalistic movie player that does precisely what you would expect. Performance is okay and quality is good. It does provide some options that can be accessed via a button at the top. Deepin Music Player is something I enjoy quite a lot. It looks good, can be skinned and has great performance and has some nice fading on the track skips. It can also be toggled to a compact mode that uses less desktop space. It also features the top options button. The Deepin store is essentially the Ubuntu software center that has been skinned, although I find it easier to use and better to look at. Software updates have also been added to the store, and it makes updates easy to manage for users who don't use terminal for updates. It can also be skinned, and it features the same options button as previously mentioned. Deepin game is still a bit of a work in progress, as it lacks English graphical user elements, although it is usable. Don't expect AAA titles, as most of the games are browser-based games, although I think that is a great idea as these games are perfect for the average user. 
The changes in the point one update has been listed as mostly stability improvements with added performance. I found the stability improvements to be drastic as I experienced a lot of instability with the 2014 version. And since using the point one, I've yet to find fault and as such, I would like to congratulate the Deep and crew on a job well done. As a performance, I didn't have any issues before the update and as such, I don't have much to say. Boot times have always been excellent on Deepin. And the only notable thing is that the system uses a bit less memory now that although the difference seems marginally small. In summary, Deepin is still a solid performer and visually attractive distro that's worth keeping your eye on. So from tax reviews, I hope you enjoyed this episode and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.